I don't know, I'm just practicing my Robert Robert De Niro impression because uh, this guy really went downhill. I mean, he basically he just told the president to go fornicate with himself, but whatever. I really think that this guy is going crazy. Everyone's going crazy right now. So, where do we left off? Oh yes, I found a new site, a website that sells German gear, and I believe I found a way to get myself that Fieldblusen or the Fieldblouse, the M1949. It's a, the M1943, I believe it was. It was introduced late into the war, and it's a beautiful um collab. No way, it's a beautiful blend, mixed blend of green and gray. So I really like that. I really like that a lot. Instead of just having the 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 dark gray uniforms that all the Germans wore during World War II. So, yeah, thank you, Shutter, for telling me which website it was. So I'll be by the end of the week, or hopefully by the end of the month, I'll be able to get myself a hand on one of those. But this is this this field this field blouse isn't just like a regular T-shirt. I'm gonna have to um, find all the dimensions around you know the chest, the length, as well as the length of the of the sleeves because. I'm gonna have to find the right one. If I don't find the right one, I'm SOL. So that's the that's the latest report on on the on the loadout as well. So yeah, and I'm also looking out for which gear which gear which gear loadout I'm gonna be using. Either I'm gonna be a rifleman, a stoneman, a Panzer grenader, or just your basic um, Panzer grenadier. So I don't know. Um, the I really don't have real clear context of which one I really want. So comment down below if you guys want to if you guys want to choose my basic loadout of of what I should be using as my primary weapon. So go ahead, feel free. Now this is a this is the part of the three, two, one. Now I need to put more context onto what I actually just said about my, my last video. Is when I said that when French soldiers were tearing apart German houses and just being total dicks to them during occupation. Okay, let me put more context into that because one of my friends named Paul actually brought this up and he didn't really understood the, the question and he he said, "Are you talking about after the war, um, after 1945 in the French sector zone?" And I said, "No, no, no, no." I told him, "No," and I. And I feel like I could give you more context, so here we go. So, in 1923, this was during the time when Germany was given the enforcement of to pay the war reparations in the, that is specifically stated in the Treaty of Versailles. And during this time, in 1923, the Depression was already happening and was already happening. Now, in 1923, the Depression was already kicking off and hyper the German and hyperinflation of the Reich or the of the of the Deutschmark was about to take off. So this means that everyone is in economic downturn. The British didn't really care. And as far as I mean, well, the British didn't really care, but the Dutch and the French really, really cared as to where were the war reparations, where was our payment? How come you guys are not making this deadline? But as I said, I stated before, Germany was already having a tough time trying to pay back the war reparations because they were flat broke. They were broke. They were essentially a broken people. Now, the advocator for the for this occupation, with specifically in the Burr in the Burr region, the Burr Valley, his name it was a French prime minister. The French prime minister during World War One. His name is Alex. No, no, not Alex. Um, Nicolas um, Pion Carry, and he was the one who advocated for the occupation of this specific area. Now the Ruhr Val, the Ruhr, the Burr air, the Burr region, was heavily, um, I guess you could say, rich with coal mines in in the in the entire area alone. So, this was a heavily economic. And a heavily economically strategic area that both the French and the Dutch had to get their hands on quickly and as wise as, as it means by now. Basically, just going up to a person, well, more like debt collectors, and they're just using their armed forces as their, as their, I guess you could say, their, the loan sharks, making sure that the Germans pay their deadlines on the clock, right on the dot. Now, you might be asking, well, how come they didn't raid the banks? How come they didn't raid their gold, gold supplies? Well, in layman's terms, capital is capital no matter what. I mean, if you have three cars that are ready to be sold, three new cars that are ready to be, ready to be, ready to be sold, so you're going to take those cars and you're going to sell them yourself no matter what. So 
that's what I mean by capital. Capital is capital. I mean, if you can make money off of it, more power to you, especially if it's unsold and you have that, and if you had the opportunity to turn capital into actual, into actual valuable assets, then again, more power to you. And when it comes down to coal mines, yeah, you're definitely not going to waste all your time I'm worried about the next payment. You're just going to go in and just take all the supplies that you need because, again, this was during the time of the, of the well, well, the depression was already taking off. So it was more time for everyone to hunker down and just start building up their supplies as much as possible because, again, things were just going to get from bad all the way to the worst as the depression wars on. And that's what I mean by the occupation of the Burr Valley. It was horrible for the Germans because. When French soldiers walk walking around your French soldiers are walking I mean, well, let me put it into perspective. When you see foreign soldiers walking around your hometown or your home area, you feel you don't feel confident. You feel frightened. You feel absolute fear when when these guys are just walking around and just man well uh, punishing you for what happened during the war and this and, and come on this is this is a beef between the French and as well as the Germans the French and the Germans don't really have a great relationship with each other because it took the entire threat of Napoleon for the Germans to unite against Napoleon and and also rose up again when uh, Otto von Bismarck reunified the entire German state to to defend themselves against French tyranny and uh, and the Iron Cross is the symbol of the of French tyranny because iron iron represents tough tough times as in, as well as the cross. Uh, yes, it was a Christian symbol, believing that God get got me got me to us, God with us. And, and that's what you have between the relationship between the French and as well as the Germans. That didn't mean that the Germans protest. There were so many protest marches going around in the Burr areas signifying we don't want you here we're gonna do what we gotta do i mean we got tough times having it right now i mean just all these types of anti-french or anti-occupational agendas because just get them out of here we'll do we'll do um we'll bat our best because apparently the guilt clause is already has already destroyed us enough i mean the guilt clause itself just basically ended all all dreams of total german nationalism and I'm happily, happily to bring more contacts into that. So, look up the the occupation of the Burr region. So, I mean, the the Burr occupation. It was very, it was very depressing, especially during that time. So, yeah. Thank you, Paul, for reminding me of what I had, of what I need to explain furthermore into context. Now, as in further, well, that's that's what I have to do. That's that's my total update on. The loadout itself. I'm too, I'm really busy right now trying to um, to find the the right fitting on the on the on the field blusen right now. So as more information comes in, I'll give you guys more updates. So feel free to click that subscription button to to see the to see this loadout getting passed and getting complete. So again, this is Skinwalker signing out.